All right, we're recording now. Come on, there we go. And go to that, the 5.5, first part of 5.5, the one I handed out before the break. All right, this one's kind of wordy, guys. Sorry, lots of words in today's notes. Discrete data are, I'll have to write kind of small to fit everything in here, data points, I say data, or measurements that only include Are you okay with this word? Particular values. Another word that I could use there is maybe specific values. Each one distinct from the others. Discrete data can be numerical. And what I mean, for example, um, for example, number of apples. Or, what kind of data isn't numerical? We call it categorical. And let's see, did we spell that right? Categorical, yes we did. Anybody think of an example of categorical data? How about, say for example, red or blue? You could put, you could take a set of data and measure its color. How about days of the week? Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, etc. Oh, how about this category? I, I take a thousand people and I measure them and put them into categories A, B, A, B, O. What categories are those? Blood types, right. So there you go. That's data, but it's not really numerical. It's categorical. Get the idea? This is the most important part right here. There are no implied values between discrete data points, right? If I took everybody in the room's blood type, I have to put you in one of these four categories. You can't be between two categories. It's not possible. You can't be A, you can't be a and a half, okay? Now, continuous data, let me put a line here so that we can kind of section this off a bit. Continuous data is not restricted to specific separate values. It can occupy any value over a continuous range. And this is the big difference between discrete and continuous. Between any two continuous data points, there could be 
Are you okay with that symbol? There could be infinite. There could be sideways eight. That means infinite. There could be infinite numbers of other points. My examples would include things like number lines for time, temperature, I'll just say etc. after that, right? That's right, you, you look at a number line, say between the numbers 1 and 2. As long as you're willing to zoom in on a scale infinitely, you can always find an infinite number of numbers between any two points. And that's true when you're measuring data along that too, right? Like if I had a sensitive enough clock, I could find time to the nearest second, or tenth of a second, or hundredth of a second, or billionth of a second, right? I think that's called a nanosecond, right? So the data is continuous. I might not have had the technology to measure one second plus nine nanoseconds, but if I had the technology, I could. There is data between those two data points. When you are graphing, you must put discrete data in, is it is separate with an E, separate? Or is it separate? I think I spelled it wrong earlier. I think this is right. Separate. Here's the important part, unconnected points or you can group them together in what we call bins of data. And you probably can think of the word bin as like, oh, like, like, a, like a drawer you put stuff in. Yeah, and in statistics, in data collection, bins could be things like, for example, the bars of a bar graph, or the wedge pieces, the wedges of a pie chart, right? Those, those are what we call bins of data, right? You've grouped together this percentage of the people and put it into a pie chart piece. Or you graphed a bar graph and this bar represents 500 data points or something like that. Okay? Second point, you must put discrete data in separate unconnected points or you put them in bins. And you must put continuous data on a coordinate grid and connect the points. And as you can probably imagine, since we've been talking about you know, graphing lines and stuff, continuous data is a little bit more what we focus on in this course. Having said that, you need to be able to tell the difference between the two. All right, now that you've kind of heard me talk about what these two things are and what they mean, see if you could answer example one yourself. You have three things there. Pick whether you think they're discrete, continuous. I guess there's no third choice. Discrete or continuous. Okay, so take a, just take a second. Do you see this as discrete or continuous? All right, well, I guess the easiest one is probably C, because they connected the dots for me with a line. So therefore, it is definitely continuous. Now, according to this graph, they measured the distance traveled every 100 kilometers. Right, Every 100 kilometers, they stopped and looked to see how much gas had been used, right? And then 200, then 300. But there's nothing stopping them from stopping at 210.753 kilometers and finding this spot right here where it would be 41.683, 
I'm just making numbers up. I have no idea. But you get the idea. There are numbers between those dots that exist. I just didn't measure them. That's what makes it continuous data. What do you think of A? Why? There you go. This one's discrete. You can't make a decimal of a t-shirt. Right? That leaves, that leaves kind of the toughest one. What about B? Now, I've had students, I've been using these notes for a few years now, and I've had students look at B and go, oh, it's got to be discrete because how the sides, number of sides. You can't have 1.5 sides. Look at this more carefully. This is not number of sides. It's length in centimeters. You could have a one point something centimeter long side on a box. So this one's definitely continuous. They happen to measure and make the chart in whole numbers, but that was just an arbitrary choice. You could easily find the volume of a box that had sides that were three point something, right? Ooh, this one's fancy colors in mine. Okay, so example two. To rent a car for less than one week from Ace Car Rentals, the cost is $65 per day for the first three days, then $60 for each additional day. So first of all, which variable is which? Independent is the X, which is number of days. Dependent is the Y, which is the cost. Now let's graph the data. So let's see. We're going to have to make a scale here. Um, hmm. I think if we count by 25s, everything will fit. 25, 50, 75, 100. 25, 50, 75, 200. 25, 50, 75, 300. And, oh, wait a minute. Hang on. No, that doesn't fit. No. Okay, mulligan. Sorry. We can go by 50s. Actually, you know what? Let's go by 33 and a thirds. Just to make you mad. Three, three, hundred. One, two, two hundred. One, two, three hundred. Because I only have to make it to 400, right? There we go. 400. We'll count by threes. Every, every, every three blocks is 100, or every block is a third of 100, which is 33 and a third. Nobody said scales had to be in whole numbers. And I will count on the bottom in whole numbers. In fact, I will count by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. But you know what? I don't want to scrunch all my data to the side. So every two blocks is one whole. That's what makes... No, no, it'll fit. Five, six. Fits just fine. And, okay, now let's put the dots down. One makes 65. Okay, so one, that's 33 and a third. That's 66, so 65 will be just below it. Number two would be, um, let's see, what is number two? Number two is 130, so 133, so just below it. Number three is 195, so let's see, that's 100, 200, so 195 would be just below it. Actually, I probably exaggerated that. Make a bigger dot that's closer to the line. Number four is 255, okay, so that's 200. 230, 266, so 255 is probably about midway in that box, I would say. And number five is 315, so there's 300. That's 330, so 15 is less than halfway up that box. And number six is 375, so let's see, number six, so that's 366 and two-thirds. So 375 is probably, I don't know, maybe part way up there. Close enough. Looks pretty linear. Looks really linear. Let's make a straight line. Uh-oh. Don't do that. Why not? Um, I bet it'd be pretty close. Every Y is adding 65. So should I make a line connecting the dots? There you go. Unless they tell us something new about this data... Like, for example, will this company offer me some sort of rate for a partial day? I don't really have any evidence that, that it would be continuous data. I'd have to call it discrete. Having said that, that's not exactly... Oh, yeah, they do ask me that. Uh, will you join the points of the line? I would say probably no. Uh, no evidence 
suggests the data may be continuous. As far as we know, we get one day, two days, three days. We can't rent the car for a day and a half, as far as we know. Is this relation a function? Yeah. Same reason as before. Every x has a unique y. That's supposed to be a u, not an a. Yeah, you know what? I think I think maybe maybe the fact that I have so many numbers in such a cramped scale maybe makes it look linear. It'd be probably linear starting at the third dot, right? Because the first two dots have a special, or, or the first two dots are more money, and then it's less. So so it's it would actually be a straight line for the first two, and then another straight line, but with a bit of an angle between them. You just can't tell that on this scale. You just can't tell that on the scale. OK, what's the domain and range? Well, again, my domain is all the things x can be. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Again, I, if I want to write that fancy, I can say that my x values are more than or equal to 1, less than or equal to 6. But I have to tell the person looking at it what kind of numbers we mean in this scale. And we mean, again, natural numbers, or you could say integers. Yep, but yes, it would. On a question like this, I would I would be perfectly happy with that answer. And uh, but what if it's multiple choice and I give you an answer like that, right? You have to be able to read either way. Grade ten students are supposed to be able to read set notation. That's that's the curriculum. That's what they tell us. Now there is no easy way for me to make a nice fancy scale for range, so I'm just going to have to to list the numbers. Sixty five, one thirty. So yeah, and then after that. You are going up by, oh, wait a minute, you're still going up by 65s, aren't you? Nope. 60, oh, yeah, you're right. You only go up by, you go up by 65, and then you go up by 65 again, and then it's just 60 each time. So, yeah, it would actually be two different linear equations put together. There we go. All right. Speaking of domain and range, they want us to kind of re, um, what's the word here, redefine them now that we've had some kind of new information. Now, we, we still have the same basic definition. All possible x values. But let's think about what we mean by the letter x. I should say values of the data. Um, Another thing we can call the x values is we can call them the independent values. And we can call them the input values. And I'm going to go this way because I'm out of room. Uh, we could also call them all possible domain elements is what we call the domain. And the range is, of course, all possible y values of the data. But let's see, what else can we call the y values? Well, we can call them the dependent. We can call them the output. And we can also call them the range elements. Remember, discrete data can only take certain values. All right, so consider the following. Yeah, very Bill Nye. Consider this number line. Am I going too fast? There's some people here. I'll give you a second to catch up for me. There. Okay, example three. Consider this number line. That's a very nice number line. I've considered it. All right, let's put, uh, let's, let's give you some information about this number line. This number line is going to be the set of all numbers where x is greater than or equal to three, and x is an element of the real numbers. 
That is what we would call continuous. Because it's all real numbers, which means not, not only is it 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, it's also all of the decimals and fractions between the 3 and the 4, the 4 and the 5. So how do I actually write that down? Well, if I'm going to write that down, I would say it's going to look like this. It's going to be solid dot and then... Now, why did I make a solid dot? Because this could be equal to 3. Okay, do you have another color? Because I don't want to draw a new number line. All right, well, do the best you can. I'm going to use, sure, I'm going to use blue for this one. And for my blue data, I'll draw it down here. I am going to give you the set of all x values where x is greater than or equal to negative 5, less than or equal to negative 2, but x is an element of the integers. What is that going to look like on my number line? Well, what would it look like? Well, at minus 5, I'd have a dot. Would that dot be connected to a line? No, because the line between negative 5 and negative 4 would not be integers. That would be like negative 4.7, negative 4 and 3 eighths. I would have dots here, here, and here. Okay, so this one is discrete. Let's do one more. I'll do this one in red. I want the set of all numbers where x is greater than negative 1 and less than 1. And this time, I'm not going to say, and I'm going to put a little note, if a set doesn't define what kinds of numbers it is, You're on the right track. I was just about to say that. Assume what? Assume reals. Which, of course, makes it continuous. So I am going to have some sort of line. Ooh, but how do I say that that line can't include negative 1? Right. Now, do you, first of all, do you get why it can't be negative 1? Because there's no little equals under here. So from here to here, it would look like that. So this one's definitely continuous. So continuous, continuous, discrete. There is what the difference looks like on a number line. All right, now let's look at graphs in two dimensions. I'll give you a sec to catch up to me again. I know, I'm drawing fast. A lot of writing. I want to get through it all. I don't know. We're not going to... Ah, we, we might get through the rest of this. We'll see. This next page, there's a bunch of writing. Then after that, it's not a lot of writing. Okay, everybody caught up? Okay, I'll give you a sec. Okay, example... For some reason, they forgot to, that they were numbering the examples, and they called this example three again. <laughs> all right. State the domain and range of the given, given the following graphs. Okay, so my domain for this one is, now I can't make a, a nice little say, oh, it's all of the integers between here and here, because notice there's no value when x is negative 2. So I just have to list them. It's negative 3, negative 1, 1, 2, and 4, right? This dot's the negative 3, this dot's the negative 1, 1, 2, and 4. My range, same thing. My range would be, uh, start from the smallest, go to the biggest. Negative 2 is this dot. 1 is this dot. I'm not going to say 1 again. I already have that element in my range, so I don't need to say the element twice. 2 and 4. Is this a function is going to be the question that we should ask. Is this a function? 
So what do you think? Is that a function? The answer is yes. It would not fail a vertical line test. Every x has a unique y. Two different... Uh, there, there is... Uh, um, wow, one y has two different x's, but that's not the problem. Every x has its own y, so the answer is yes. All right, so let's try the next one. First of all, how good are you at reading dots? Domain is, let's see, let me get that centered here. Let's see, we have negative four. We don't have any negative threes. We have negative two. We don't have any negative ones. We have zeros. We have ones, we have twos, we have threes, we have fours. Our range, okay, let's count the y dots. We start at the bottom at negative three. We have a negative two. We have a negative one. We have a zero. We have a one. We have a two. Oh, we don't miss any. I guess this one I could have actually put in a, in a fancy statement, but that's good enough for now. Is this a function? And you see right away the answer is no. Why not? Because, I'll say for example, because there's a couple of examples. When x equals 0, y can be either 0 or negative 1. And that leads me to something that I said a minute ago. Don't know if you got it. If you're looking at a graph, you don't have to necessarily read all the numbers. The quick way to tell if it's a function or not is by drawing a vertical line or imagining drawing vertical lines everywhere. If a vertical line can be drawn anywhere, anywhere should be one word, anywhere through the function and cross it only once, it must be a function. And I just realized I shouldn't have put the word function here. I'm testing to see if it's a function. I don't know that it's a function yet. How about I put the word graph there? I guess I could have put the word relation there too, right? It doesn't have to be a function, but it could be a relation. And of course, the opposite would be true. If a vertical line crosses, I'll say this one better this time, crosses the graph of a relation, and then I'll misspell relation, eee. relation twice or more. It can't be a function. Uh, would it be fair to say that if you could draw a vertical line between more than one point on a graph, then it would not be a function? It's not just more than, yeah. If, if you can draw a vertical line anywhere through the graph and it hits the graph twice, its function status is over. It fails. Okay? All right. Remember that continuous data can exist for values between given decimals. We got more number lines. Consider this number line. I'll draw it this time. How about, okay, I'll make this one in black. In black, I've got this number line here. That's supposed to be just joined to that. And in blue, I'll do this one here. Oh, wait, I actually meant to go further over. Okay, so now your job is how can we define these two, two graphs symbolically? All 
All right, so the easier one is the black one. We can say x, and how would you say that? How would, how would you use symbols to give that black line? You did this kind of stuff in grade 9. Correct. X is greater than negative 4. And again, if I don't say x is an element of reals, I assume that it's true. So I don't really need to even say anything else. Okay. Uh, that one I would almost call informal. Let's be more formal on the blue one here. Let's use the, the full language. x such that, and then this time I'm going to put x between two things. x is, now, x is greater than or equal to the negative 2, but it doesn't get to 4. It could be 3.99999, but it's not going to get to 4. Less than 4. And if you're going to be in formal notation, of course, you'd say x is an element of reals. But that's far, that's very, very formal. So again, this one's very, very formal. This one's a little more informal. All right. Example five. State the domain and range and set notation for the following. And state whether or not it's a function. And we're going to say... Let's do this all informally. The domain is x is, OK, I don't know if you can tell that from here, but those dots are supposed to be open, I think. Does yours look like they're shaded in? They do look like they're shaded in? OK, well, if they're shaded in, then I guess we better, OK, let's shade, the, let's, let's shade them in solidly then and say less than or equal to and less than or equal to 2. Do you have to put the smallest one on the left? Yes. It's actually, even in the informal way, you always have to go smallest to biggest. Okay? Range, what are the y values doing? Well, the smallest one is negative 1. The biggest one we get to is 4. Any questions on how I figured that out by looking at it? All right, your turn. See if you can do B, C, and D. And that will be your only homework tonight. So if you can finish that in 10 minutes, you are homework free tonight. So I'm going to stop recording there, and we'll pick it up tomorrow.